A CBDC, I think you're asking whether a CBDC would serve some of that, but a CD, CBDC is going to be years in the evaluation, and I think we can get this into the hands of the public very quickly, and I think we'll have real-time payments in this country very soon, and yeah. so that, that's a good thing. We'll have real-time payments in this country really soon. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I got some great research I put together on Project Hamilton. We had some Senate hearings yesterday, some House hearings, and Project Hamilton got brought up. So I'm going to play that clip, and then I'm going to show you what Project Hamilton is, who, who might be working with Project Hamilton, and the research behind it. So let's get into the video. Boop. All right, guys, check us out. So here is the uh, saucy clip from Congress yesterday. Here and update us. Mm -hmm. uh, Last week, the Treasury Department announced that leaders from Treasury would begin to meet regularly with leaders from the Fed and from the White House uh, to discuss a possible CBDC, central bank digital currency, and other payment innovations. In the statement, it was mentioned, and I'll quote from it, said that the Fed is encouraged to provide periodic public updates as it continues its research and its technical experimentation on central bank digital currencies. I was wondering, first of all, when you might be expecting to share some of these public updates. What's the timing on that? So we did go out for comment in general on a CBDC a year or so ago, and I do expect we'll go out. I don't, I can't give you a date, but we'll certainly go out and engage. We, we engage with the public on an ongoing basis. Yeah. We are, we're also doing research on policy and also on technology. That's what we're up to. I'm aware the Boston Fed has a partnership there, the uh, Hamilton Project over there with the folks from MIT Media Lab, they're doing a great job. It says here that the discussions would include technical experimentation. I was just wondering at what level are you talking about making decisions on architecture for a CBDC, a retail CBDC? We're not at the stage of making any real decisions. Remember guys, retail is for us and people like me and you. Wholesale is for central banks and banks to move money around. What we're doing is experimenting in early stage experimentation. How would this work? Does it work? What's the best technology? What's the most efficient? We're really at an early stage on, but we're making progress on technological issues. The policy issues are equally important though. We haven't decided that this is something that the financial system in the country want or need. All right. So it's right. gonna be very important. All right, so check this out. So I did some digging and please go follow Golden Pocket. Only 23 subscribers on YouTube, but they put this together. It's actually a really good job. Let me play this video for you. It's three minutes. I'll speed it up just a bit so we don't have to sit here for the full three minutes. But this person did some great research and I wanted to give them the shout out on this research because, hey, that's what you do. When you find other people that do hard work, you give them the credit, okay? Check this out. So he's MIT FinTech is what he's pointing out. And then MIT.com speakers, right? And so this is 2021, right? This is last year. They were working on this 2021 into 2022. So he's showing you the research here. So he's pointing out this person, Sheila Warren. She's the head of blockchain and data policy member of the executive committee, World Economic Forum, okay? And then they're pointing out a document, JP Morgan Coin, central bank digital currencies. All right, let me just rewind that real quick so I can just, if you missed that. Ah! Okay, so check this out. So this is a document. I've seen this document a bunch of times. I've shown my community, but Central Bank Digital Currency Toolkit. This is from years ago. This is from 20, 2020, I think, and it has JP Morgan Coin and XRP on here, okay? I wanted to show you that. Got all the intense music. I love it. David Schwartz is also here. And this woman, too, is really important. Simon Johnson. Central Bank. Simon Johnson's also joined us, who is a former chief economist of the International Monetary Fund. He's told me he doesn't want to be caught on, but I will call on Simon to get his perspective at some point in time from the IMF days. But as you all know, Simon is a Sloan faculty, a great teacher himself, teaches a lot of you at the Global Markets course and the GLAB course and things like that. And Simon and I in the spring teach a public policy and private sector course, which is just one, one more time for me to plug that that's a good course too. There's connections to Bank of England here too, so I'm going to show you that. Yeah, so he points out Neha um, Nula. Hi, Joey. I'm Neha Nula. I'm the director of the PCI. And I'm Joey Ito, the, the director of the MIT Media Lab. Yeah, and we're here today to talk about the DCI, which is the Digital Currency Initiative here at the Media Lab. So she worked on this paper. That's what we're pointing out here. And then also Ra Rabi Ali, who you're, Rabi Ali, who used to be working for Bank of England, now is at this MIT course. It's pretty cool how we got started and about the digital currency cryptocurrency blockchain space so this is a facebook live but we'll post it as a podcast and other things later so you are on the record but um, you're now officially no longer at the bank of england that's correct. 
this is what's going to say. So, uh, with some real expertise in the room, and I'm not talking about myself, but Rob Ali, who ran the digital efforts at the Bank of England and is now, and has been for some time, part of the digital currency initiative over the Media Lab, is going to come up from time to time and uh, give his perspective, on not only from MIT's Media Lab's perspective, but also from the history of what he's done. I like the intense music, though. It's pretty good. And we decided to partner with MIT, specifically the Digital Currency Initiative, or DCI. It's even been in existence for five years, and doing experiments in coding and testing CBDC platforms. We thought they were amongst the best in the world. We're working proactively to evaluate whether to issue a CBDC, and if so, in what form. We have two broad work streams, one of which is really technology, both at the board and in the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston's work with MIT. We could actually get the internet of value. The internet of value. The internet of value, moving money around the globe. All right, cool. Check us out. Project Hamilton has concluded weeks after legislators inquire, according to Boston Fed. This is from the end of last year, okay? It says, Project Hamilton, the research project of the United States Federal Reserve Bank, Boston and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, announced its conclusion in the run-up to Christmas. The two-year project looked at the technical aspects of the hypo hypothetical United States digital dollar, central bank digital currency, or CBDC. Project Hamilton took critical early steps towards a deeper understanding of how money might work better for all of us. Boston Fed Executive Vice President Jim Kunha said in a statement announcing the conclusion of the project, in February, the technology agnostic project released a white paper and open source research software called Open CBDC in two versions, one, only one which was used to distribute ledger technology at the time. Or organizers promised that continuing research would look at privacy, audib audibility, programmability, interoperability, and more, okay? And it goes on to talk a little bit more about this, but check this out. So as we dig a little deeper here into this, so I pulled up speakers for 2022 MIT FinTech and you have David Schwartz here and you have some of the same players in the space here, which is really interesting, right? Back in 21, back in 22. Also, there was this video, it's about an hour long, but there's little clips in this video I wanna show you. So one of them is this clip. It says, and actually they didn't want to show this. Look, check this out. They didn't want, the guy just pushed, sent this one forward. Listen to this. Type of performance implications. And so a lot is happening globally, but importantly, Watch. every country has to focus on their own requirements for their own economy. Next slide, please. You, you can go, next slide. So he doesn't want to show this slide. I want to show you this slide because there's some important information on here, extremely important. Check this out. England formed two industry advisor groups and recently issued a public consultation paper and recently partnered with MIT. So now you have the Bank of England working with MIT on this, right? The reason this is important is because Ripple is working with the Bank of England. And also too, Brazil down here, working with Ripple to build a prototype and looking to have a pilot by the end of 2022. So Ripple's working with Brazil and several other central banks that we know about currently on CBDCs. They also went on to talk about what does Project Hamilton need to do? So Project Hamilton track overview phase one, build a core engine to meet the key requirements of a nationwide US CBDC. Designs will be benchmarked to assess scalability to reach 100,000 transactions per second, clearing and settlement in under five seconds. Clearing and settlement, right? You need to have an asset ISO compliant that can do this. Resiliency, high resilient and robust recoverability, security and privacy. You have a privacy, you have ledgers that are private ledgers that banks and central banks are going to use. They also went on to talk about, they also tested phase one build two core engineers, right? And so they said autonomizer achieved 170,000 transactions per second with 99% finality in under two seconds. And they even built out a two PC achieved 1.7 million transactions with 99% finality in under one second. So they are testing different technologies here. And it's really interesting to see what they're going to choose at the end of the day, but what it, what ever they do choose, whether it's XRP or USDC, or they build their own stuff, it has to be AML and CFT. I think this is certified financial finance terrorism or whatever. It's like anti-terrorism. So they, the money's not going there and AML anti-money laundering. And they also have to have KYC for all of this. So that's very important. And also too, guys, MIT is running a validator consensus node on the XRP ledger. And also too, they talk about needing to be able to have offline transactions in that. I watched that whole hour for you, so you didn't have to, but I, I suggest it'd be a good idea for you to go watch it so you can better understand what's going on here. But they also made it a point that it has to have offline transactions, no internet needed for XRP ledger transactions. I just wanted to show you that as well. And then also Ripple put out this great paper, a state of global CBDC adoption by Daryl Duffy. And this was actually in January of this year. And this goes on to talk a little bit more about CBDCs, but I wanted to show you the connections, right? Digital currency initiative here, and then open CBDCs, Bitcoin security. And so they are testing a lot of different technologies, which I love, right? You want to test it and use the best 
best thing for what you want to use here, but check this out. Ripple proof of concept. They were working with Bank of England since 2017 or maybe even before that, but here's some more connections, right? Real time growth settlement system, Bank of England, 2021. And this goes on to talk a little bit more. This is Mark Carney from the Bank of England. Check this out. Almost like a mic drop. And you said we need to go to a global virtual currency. It's a 23 page speech. It's very heavy. Give us the thumbnail. Did Why? Just read the, I want to know. Did you just read the conclusion of the speech? Steve? No, I read, read 14 <laughs> pages okay, and then good. I jumped okay, to the okay. conclusion. So, the, so, so, so what's the point? Give us the thumbnail. Why can't the dollar be the global currency? Okay, the dollar is the global currency. We know that. The challenge is that the U.S. share of the global economy has been reducing. The dollar's share of payments, not just financial assets, but payments. A lot of payments between countries that have nothing to do with the U.S. are in dollars. And what happens in situations like today, where the U.S. economy, to its credit, is relatively strong, is doing better, and the Fed has been doing the right thing, which is they've adjusted policy, they tightened policy as it was strengthening. Now they're making the Fed doing the right thing, but they have adjusted and policy is relatively strong. That means rest of world policy is tighter than it needs to be. And that feeds back on the U.S. economy in a way that ultimately slows this economy. And it leads to a substandard outcome. And in a world where you only have limited policy space, it's a dangerous place to be. And it's so the trade issues we're talking about are reinforced by the structure of the monetary system. Now, you've asked a big question, so just give me a second to. But, But now the issue is. You don't just jump to something new overnight. And the what we want in a multipolar world, I think we'd agree that we've got European engine, we've got the Chinese engine, we've got the US engine of this economy, multipolar world, you need a multipolar currency. The question is how do you get there? And I laid out some ideas of how you need a multipolar you need a currency that every country will use, right? Holding digital yuan. The United States is not gonna do that. Brazil is not gonna do that. Each country probably won't hold each other's e cryptocurrency or e C B D C. But if they had a global currency and a liquidity pool that they could drive from like on-demand liquidity that would rapidly increase the use of cbc's and also too there's a lot of stuff but here like this is more stuff as proven in the bank of england's recent successful test of the interledger program developed by ripple blockchains promises to greatly reduce settlement times and fees to end users by removing and reducing correspondent banks and since then the bank of england has come out with a document i didn't have it here i'm sorry guys but they said that they're going to be using ripple they're going to stop using swift as much as they were and they want to use this new technology so it's really amazing to see project hamilton and some ties to bank of england all these guys are working together david schwartz a big mit person and i do think that they are and they did test ripple's technology in this test here it's just fun guys we're just researching here we're deep diving hey if you got some better things or you'd like to share you pulled up please share in the comments you know share with somebody you know we are getting close to a us cbdc maybe it's a year away maybe it's two years away but we've never been closer So I'm super excited about that. I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Cheers.